get a hankering for some RP. Cruise a couple forums, something catches my eye. Some kind of weird combination of stuff from Dragon Ball Z, Gorin Lagan, Avatar The Last Airbender, and a few other different themes from different shows. Basically, Animu the Game. Honestly, kind of a cool setting. If you're reading through it, superpowered dudes wander around doing their own thing, having adventures and trying to stop evil shadows from consuming the world. Looks cool, sign up and start making a character. Character set attributes, strength, speed, the usual shit. Traits and powers chosen from a big list and spirit which you use for doing cool shit. Had a certain number of points to spend on attributes. Max strength, put some to speed, endurance, and a couple in charm. Wanted to be a brawler type guy, but I'll get to why that idea was a bad one later. Look at spirit rolls before picking powers, because I wanted to do as much cool shit as I possibly could. Spend spirit to activate powers. Different powers modified how spirit worked and gave it an elemental alignment which modified damage and other crap. Basically, let you spend one point of spirit to get five points of fire damage. There was also raw spirit which had no modifier but had no elemental alignment and couldn't be resisted. Less bang for your buck, but could be useful. Raw spirit could also be used to raise a stat temporarily, but the higher the stat, the more spirit you had to spend. Spirit had a cap depending on your attributes. At lower levels, it was pretty low, like 10 or 20, if you got lucky. With my stat layout, I had 5. Awesome. Look through the powers list to see if I can unscrew my character. Browse through the list, pretty basic stuff. Throw fire, control shadows, frost breath, whatever. Also had mundane powers like sword fighting and free running. Choose unarmed combat right off the bat because I want to punch people. Keep looking, see something interesting tucked away in the list. Overflowing spirit. Pretty expensive point-wise for a simple power, but my eyes lit up at what it did. Removes the spirit cap. Plus some other crap which I glanced over at the time, more on that in a bit. Now fuck, that seems pretty abusable. Figured everyone takes it, so I take it too. Take Battle Cry for a spirit buff and blow the last of my power points. Character's pretty much done. Named him Edgardo because it sounded cool at the time. Ready to go. Edgardo the Brawler sets out on his quest to do... whatever. Start in the central town where everyone hangs out. Introduce myself. Describe him as hot-blooded, hot-tempered, courageous, and always itching for adventure. Honestly, pretty flat character, but... I thought he was okay. Probably get laughed at for making such a naive and lowbrow character. Apparently, everyone had made brooding anti-heroes who sit in the dark corners and don't really do much of anything. And I swear the tavern had to have been some kind of eighth dimensional shape because everyone was in their own fucking corner away from everyone else. But the last straw came from some asshole drinking his wine at the bar. Edgardo is such a stupid name anyway. Motherfucker, Edgardo did not walk in here to be mocked by a bunch of trench coat wearing pricks trying to be edgier than a goddamn razor blade factory. I take a swing at him and quickly discover that I am well and truly butt fucked. Apparently, unarmed combat was hosed from the start, as fists don't do shit against even the lightest of armor, and they don't get any damage multipliers. Fantastic. Blow a spirit point just to get past his armor. Do single digit damage. Fucker laughs at me and stands up. Care to try that again, you pathetic wretch? Use Battle Cry. Can't think of anything, so I go with Banzai and use the rest of my spirit points. Nothing. He dodges and draws his sword and gives an eye rolling Disappear. Before he blasts me out of the tavern with sword, lightning, whatever the fuck. He spends one spirit for that, and I nearly get one shot. Even with a good amount of endurance. Fucking what? So while I'm bleeding out on the side of the road, I take the time to browse some of the characters. First up is Sword Lightning Asshole. Basically the same level as me, but better in every way. Powers are better, higher spirit, good stats, more my fault because I really fucked up character creation. Browse more characters. I noticed something. No one has overflowing spirit. No one. Ask why. Turns out that if you make a decent character, you have more than enough spirit to do whatever the fuck you want. Even the highest level characters only have about 100 cap, and it's pretty rare to get halfway down in a normal fight. And then there was the part that I skipped over. Overflowing spirit prevented you from taking elemental powers. You were basically stuck using raw spirit, which was shit. Elemental spirit had damage modifiers so high that even if you resisted it, you still took a good amount of damage. Neato Burrito. 
Edgardo was basically useless against everything. Since I was screwed, I PM'd a mod to see if I could make a new character that wasn't crippled beyond belief. LOL, deal with it, you made it, you play it. So, recap, everyone's a pretentious fuckwad, the mods don't give a shit, and Edgardo is beyond worthless. Great start. I pick myself up out of the dirt and limp away to get myself healed. Nope, I was broke, so I couldn't do shit. I'd have to sit my ass down and wait to heal naturally, which would take days. Fuck that, I'm, ar I'm already tired of this shit. So, I make an attempt to steal a potion. No. Enter Militant Zero. Yes, that was his name. I cringe too. Omnipotent character number 4,782. Could do anything he wanted because he had been with the RP the longest. I also suspect that he had sucked the admin's dick, but whatever. Teleports to me instantly, and I can't do shit because I'm basically dead on my feet. Lists me in the air with magic psychic bullshit so I can't even run. He starts going on a long speech about crime and how evildoers should be punished and how he's the best and blah, blah, blah. Then he gives me an ultimatum. Beg for mercy and I might just let you stay in this town. Otherwise, I'll throw you to the shadows. Fuck no. Edgardo does not beg. Struggle, spit, swear, and do basically anything and everything I can do to get out of this. Nope. I get thrown through the roof of the building I was in and soar all the way out to the wilderness. Well, I'm dead. Fortunately, newbies get one free revive. I cash mine in. Zero gets super fucking butt mad about it and says that I'm dead for good because he said so and wah. Call him out on his bullshit. Immediately get shot down by everyone in the community. Suddenly, I'm the bad guy for trying to steal and picking a fight. Yeah, okay. Mods calm everyone down, say I'm alive with one health in the wilderness. Last bit of charity I'm getting. I won't even survive the night. But then I met a guy called Squid. Beast folk were a thing, so people could have cat girls, wolf men, shit like that. A guy called Squid was, well, part squid. Literally just a big, muscly dude with a squid for a head. And yes, his full name was a guy called Squid. And he insisted that Everyone call him that. Pretty cool dude. Ran into the same troubles I did. Was a punchy guy like myself, but he punched people with fire. Helped me out, shared a potion, and was generally a bro. We both decided to stick together and train out here, because we both needed to get a lot stronger before we headed back into town. But it wasn't going to be nearly that easy. Got to nighttime, me and Squid set up a camp in a cave. Suddenly shadows because mob bullshit and zero wine enough that I was still alive. I was still pretty fucked up, but I could hold my own, and Squid was in perfect shape. Still, we barely survived because Squid's fire damage was beastly. We both agreed that we wouldn't survive another fight like that, so we hightailed it out of there and back to town. Yeah, no. Invisible Force Shield prevented us from going back in. I wasn't surprised. Looked at the map, found a nearby town to hole up in. It'd take a couple days to get there, though, and we were both out of supplies. Neither of us saw any other way, so we got to walking. Edgardo and a guy called Squid. Just two guys on the road to adventure. Or the road to not dying horribly and somehow getting petty revenge, but whatever. Normally when people traveled, there were random events that could be either good or bad for you. It was up to how much the mods liked you, really. The mods did not like Squid or Edgardo. If we got something good, they'd find a way to take it away from us. We saved the lady from bandits on the first day, and by that I mean we kicked the bandits in the nuts, grabbed the lady, and ran like hell. That night, she prison shank squid, took what little shit we had gathered, and bailed. When I tried to chase her, she poofed. Gone. Neato burrito. I really don't know why we kept going after that. It was obvious we were unwanted, so we really should have just quit. I think we were both waiting for the other one to just give in first. I didn't want to admit defeat, and I knew squid didn't either. We had to press on. No matter what. Even when we met Sword Lightning Guy again. It had been a few days on the road, and we kept getting shit on. Wolves, rain, another shadow attack. Still, don't know how we lived, but we scraped by. Either by running the fuck away, or the sheer luck and winning a fight. One more day of traveling, and we'd be at the village. We were so close, we could taste it. But then that dick from the tavern showed up again. Never mind how he got ahead of us, but he was, and we had to take it. Well, well. 
if it isn't the wretch from the tavern. And he picked himself up a side dish, too. <laughs> Squid tells him to take a hike and let us through. But this is the tow road. You'll have to pay me to pass. Let's see. One thousand gold. Fucking what? Tell him he's full of shit and that nobody has that much money. Oh. What a shame. Then you'll have to pay. With your lives. He pulls his sword and blasts Squid who somehow powers through it. This gives me a chance to get up close and, well, we've established I can do fuck all against this guy. I'm banged up pretty good and fists don't do shit. One thing I have left, though, is a spirit. A metric ass ton of spirit. See, while we were traveling, I was hoarding points. Not intentionally, I gained some every day like everyone else. And every time Squid and I killed something, I got a little bit more. Squid was spending his spirit left and right. I wasn't. And since I had overflowing spirit, I had a lot more points than I had any right to have at my level. Even if raw spirit was crap, a lot of crap could still wreck someone's day. And Gardo had a chance. A slim chance, but it was better than nothing. Banzai! Battle cry. Use all the spirit that I had. Crouch for an uppercut. Sword guy doesn't give a shit and actually laughs in my face. Doesn't even make an attempt to dodge. You're kidding, right? We've been through this. You can't hurt me. You're the only one laughing, asshole. My fist connects with his chin and so does all that raw spirit. Didn't do nearly as much damage as an elemental attack would, but it was enough to knock him on his ass, which gave Squid the perfect setup. He jumped on Sword Guy and blew all his spirit too. Where once there had been a face, there was now a smoking crater. Sword Guy died and had two underdogs to boot. Predictably, he pitched a bitch fit and so did the rest of the players. We were murderers and outlaws, and generally horrible, horrible people for deciding not to deal with this bullshit anymore. Me and Squid didn't give a single fuck. We had earned our first actual victory. Sure, we were nearly dead, defenseless, and still had to make it to the village, but we'd won. Things were looking up, at least for a little while, but we still had to worry about Zero and his crap. Zero was some kind of king or tyrant overlord or whatever. This village was in his little authority zone. So when we finally arrive at the village, guess what special surprise was waiting for us? If you guessed, a visible, immune to everything force shield, congratulations, give yourself a gold star. And for good measure, he teleports in and taunts us, saying he'll follow us to the ends of the earth until we're broken and mad and shut the fuck up already. He cackles and ports away. Squid falls to his knees. He's had enough. We came all this way for nothing. Sure, we beat someone, but he'd be rezzed and in perfect health the next day. So, what do we do now? Squid was ready to quit. Edgardo wouldn't have it. We train, Squid. We train. We hiked up a nice grassy hill near the village, and then proceeded to beat the ever-living crap out of each other. Whenever you got into a fight, you got a couple of points towards leveling, win or lose. The only problem was that most characters couldn't spar against one another, as they'd kill each other pretty quickly. Elemental attacks and weapons combined had huge damage multipliers, so sparring would quickly end in people dead. We didn't have any weapons. An unarmed combat would take days of wailing on someone to actually kill them. The only reason Squid was alright was because of his firepower. So as long as we didn't use any spirit, we could beat each other silly, pass out, wait a while to heal, and do it all over again. It was stupid. It was cheesy. And it pissed everyone off. But it fucking worked. Some said the shadows would attack us, but we were just close enough to the village that they couldn't. I'm not sure why Zero or even the mods let us get away with that shit. I guess they didn't see us as anything to actually worry about. Eventually we leveled up though. It was slow, and there were better ways of leveling. But this was all we had. Plus it gave me another fuck ton of spirit points. Edgardo pumped up his strength first and evenly distributed the rest. Got a power to double the rate at which he gained spirit per day. I had a plan. Squid just buffed his fire fist. It was a good way to go. Now we just had to find somewhere to properly rest up. Somewhere to regroup. We couldn't just stay and wail on each other for another level. We had gotten lucky the first time, but now there was talk of a few other players jumping us. We had to move. Neither of us knew where the hell we were going or what we were doing. We just hit the road and tried to get as far away from Zero and everyone else as we could. The mods fucked with us for the first few days, but eventually they just got bored and left us alone. 
Sometimes they'd throw shadows our way, but it was nothing we couldn't handle. Random events just stopped happening for us. I think it was mainly due to us not really bugging anybody anymore. We were doing our own thing, so everyone just sort of forgot about us. Except Zero. He was still mighty pissy about me living this long. I have no idea what his deal was. Maybe it was just a challenge to his authority that I represented. Or maybe he was just a colossal prick. Either way, once we left his authority zone, or whatever, he sent one of his lackeys after us. A quick look at his character sheet and I knew just how much Zero hated us. His name was Golden Harl, and the dude was basically invincible. Magic armor let him resist all elements massively. Plus, it was super light so he could fly around and do his ninja flippy shit. He could heal himself completely by spending a couple of spirit, and his spirit refreshed basically whenever he wanted to. It was official. The mods just didn't give a shit. Oh, and we were screwed too. All we could do was keep going and hope he didn't catch up to us. He did. And damn quick too. He met us while we were traveling along a gorge, and promptly tried to knock me over the side. Golden Harl wasn't fucking around. No words, only pain. He meant business. I barely managed to dodge, which was of course met with public outcry, but I was dangerously close to the edge. Squid tried a fire punch with a couple of spirit behind it. No cell. Golden Harl got a free counterattack because fuck you, he's Golden Harl. Squid is knocked down, but it gave me an opening. I grabbed Golden Harl by the waist and gave him a suplex. My high strength let me get a few points of damage in and it put me in a better position. It didn't really matter though, as he was back up and fully healed seconds later. I helped Squid up, and we were both pretty much already dead. Golden Harl finally spoke up. Any last words? Banzai! The fucker was wide open and his back was to the edge of the cliff too. The quick PM to Squid was all it took and the quick plan went off like clockwork. Squid ran diversion, going high for a fire punch to the face. Golden Harl didn't bother to dodge, he was invincible after all. He forgot one thing though. Raw spirit can't be resisted. Edgardo went in for a gut punch with all that built up spirit from training on the road. It wasn't enough to kill Golden Harl, not by a long shot, but it was enough to knock him backwards, and that last step was a doozy. Golden Harl fell into the canyon, and we only stayed long enough to hear the dull thud of him hitting the ground. I could practically hear Zero grinding his teeth to powder as he tattled to the mods, who really didn't care enough to do anything. Surprisingly, I barely heard anything from Golden Harl's player. Just a simple PM saying, well played. I almost felt sorry that he had to meet his end like that. After all, we were pretty much free to keep going until we hit another village. Zero couldn't get us here, so no shield and no bullshit, and we could finally rest. Well, maybe. We were still broke, and there was still a small army of players after us. Apparently Golden Harl was a pretty popular character, and by killing him we were now at the top of everyone's hit list. Fantastic. Squid slept in an alley and I kept watch, trying to get a plan together. We basically had come to some sort of unspoken agreement. Squid was tired of Zero's shit, and so was I. We wanted him dead and broken. The only problem was that two low-level characters could do fuck all against the guy. His level was literally listed as an infinity sign. When Squid took watch, I read over the fluff of the setting, looking for something I could do, anything that could help us. I found it in the city of Haven. Haven was the second biggest city in the setting, just barely smaller than Zero's place. It was kind of a big deal, though. You see, it was home to the spirit well. It was a font of power that everyone flocked to, and as long as you were in Haven, your spirit points were charged instantly, up to your cap. I didn't have a cap. I still wonder how anybody in their right mind missed this little detail of overflowing spirit. It just set up so perfectly. Maybe I was being a massive that guy for exploiting this like I did, but I didn't really care. Everyone but a few people were complete assholes and I wanted their little club destroyed. It was petty, it was stupid, and it was probably hurtful to a few people, but Edgardo had a mission and a guy called Squid was going to help him see it through, if they ever got to Haven in one piece. I swear we were the only two following the traveling rules because the horde of players chasing us caught up to us a lot quicker than they should have. We had half a day to rest up before we had to hit the road again. I was useless without a built up of spirit and Squid could only fend off so many before he'd die. The only route to Haven was long winding road through the mountains and we'd be ambushed if we tried to set up camp anywhere. 
It'd take too long, and time wasn't on our side. So Edgardo had a crazy idea. What if they climbed over the mountains? It was basically suicide, as the random events were especially harsh in that terrain. No one would follow us, after all. Something might happen to their stupid special characters. Squid was on board, and he brought up an interesting point. The mods were ignoring us. Everyone was so pissed off at us, but in the grand scheme of things, we hadn't really done anything major. We killed a grand total of two characters through sheer luck and broken mechanics, and I had basically given their idol Zero a giant middle finger for simply surviving as long as I had. As we started climbing, making rolls, and getting through by the skin of our teeth, every once in a while a mod would glance over and make shit hard for us. But overall, we didn't have that much trouble. That's because trouble was waiting for us on the other side of that mountain. From our perch, we got a view of the players coming for us. There was no way we could take them all. And if we waited, they'd just get to Haven and wait for us there. And then there was the guy waiting just underneath us. Golden Harl, back from the dead. They must have fished him out of the canyon and had him rest. Or maybe he survived his fall and healed, who knows. We know he saw us, but he didn't move. He could have just jumped up at any time he wanted and murdered us right then and there, but he didn't. After a while, Squid got tired of waiting. He climbed down, and Edgardo followed to have his back in case things went south. Squid asked him what he wanted. Golden Harl just wanted to talk. Turns out he had more to his story than we knew about. Golden Harl was in the RP as long as Zero was, and frankly, he was tired of Zero's shit. Golden Harl had earned everything he had, and didn't need to resort to whining to the mods to get what he wanted. When we asked why he tried to kill us, he said that it was either follow Zero's orders or get his shit shoved in. And in a one-on-one -on -one fight, Golden Harl just couldn't compete, mainly because Zero could do whatever the fuck he wanted and no one batted an eye. After we had killed him, he was basically done. He was satisfied with the ending he had gotten, but Zero had him revived and sent him to kill us again. Golden Harl had other plans, though. Squid was suspicious, but I believed him. I'm still not sure why. Maybe I was desperate, but I told him our plan. Technically, I told everybody our plan, as it was one of the public threads. I'm an idiot, so sue me. Golden Harl said he could get us to Haven. His story was over, and he ceased giving a single fuck what anyone had to say about this. He only wanted one condition. We had to promise we'd kill Zero and end this shit once and for all. Edgardo and Squid agreed. This was our only shot, and we weren't about to throw it away. A massive shitstorm erupted from the player base as we joined up with Golden Harl. Zero called him a traitor to everything the RP stood for, and everyone made such a fuss to the mods that they nearly banned the guy. Golden Harl had a bit of sway with the mods too, and he got lucky as shit when they took his side after he pointed out that he had done nothing wrong. With the mods appeased, that just left the army of players gunning for us. The second we hit the road, they were on us. There was no fucking around anymore and the travel rules were basically out of the picture. A horde of super-powered loners and misfits charged toward us, flinging fire and lightning and all manner of weapons, all of them driven by their singular hatred of Edgardo, a guy called Squid, and the traitor Golden Harl. Golden Harl weathered the tide, taking kunai and fireballs and shadow spears without so much as flinching, because fuck you, he's Golden Harl. Me and Squid ran behind Golden Harl as he cleared a path, getting us to the other side of the army. As we kept going down the path, Golden Harl stayed behind, covering our escape. To this day, I do not know if he survived or not. I will never forget his bravery. Since everyone else was doing it, we ignored the travel rules ourselves, arriving in Haven near instantly. Zero bitched and nobody heard him. Though there was one last obstacle, though. One last player. Kane, the Shadowmancer. This fucking guy. He had a power that let him control shadows. His interpretation of what this actually did was very, very loose. And since he was in Haven, he could abuse this like nobody's business. As soon as we stepped foot in the city, Squid and me got instantly paralyzed. We call him on his bullshit, not sure why. I control the darkness in people's hearts. The darkness in everyone's soul. You are mine. Oh, eat a bag of dicks. Squid tells him that's not how that works. Kane isn't listening because it's his power and he says that's how it works and where? Meanwhile, I just sit back and ask myself a question. Why can't I hold all this spirit? Spend infinite spirit, break Kane's hold, brace for whining. How? Oh, you can't resist me. 
The darkness is in everyone's hearts. Okay, it's Edgardo's turn to be cheesy. You're wrong. My soul is a shining beacon filled with a light and a burning hope that no shadow can touch. It's a pinpoint of justice, a shining star that will deliver freedom to the universe. I will root out the darkness, the evil in this land. No shadow will be spared my light. Kane just can't comprehend how he's about to lose. He tries to shadow paralysis thing again. No cell. Infinite spirit. Who the hell do you think you're dealing with? Banzai! Swift uppercut, battle cry. Unlimited raw spirit punch. Kane gets punched into the sun. Huge shit being lost by absolutely everyone again. Squid is okay. We rest up and figure out our next move. My ultra power only works if I'm in Haven. That doesn't do us a lot of good. Squid finds out that Haven's unlimited spirit effect lingers for a day after we leave. Zero is weeks away in his city. More players are on their way to Haven, and even though I have infinite spirit, I can only use it to punch people. I'll get killed eventually. We're basically stuck. Until I notice that we've leveled up. I don't really give a fuck about my stats at this point, but there's a power that catches my eye. Teleportation. I have exactly enough points to purchase it. Normally, I wouldn't have enough spirit to use it, but Haven, so it works. Squid upgrades his fire punch. It was a good way to go. I tell Squid he can stay behind. This is going to be dangerous, and we might not be coming back. He tells me that he's with me to the end, and that he intends to see this thing through. I mean, he's got my back, no matter what. In the middle of the town square, Edgardo and a guy called Squid shared a sweaty, shirtless, muscly, manly hug for the world to see. It was super homo. Actually, we just had to be touching so we could teleport and fight show. We arrived outside the city and the shield was still up. Zero mocked us, saying that he was invincible behind his wall and we couldn't do anything. This shield can withstand a thousand times the force of anything you can throw at it. People just keep forgetting. Raw spirit can't be resisted by anything. I'll just have to hit it a thousand and one times harder. Banzai! I still flinch whenever I remember typing that. So damn cheesy. One more battle cry, blow infinite spirit. And... Nothing. Not a damn thing. Zero refused to post an actual RP after that. I think he had a stroke or something. He posted plenty in the discussion threads, though. Everyone did. The entire community spammed the forums, declaring that I should be banned, flayed, and hung for my shenanigans. And the next day, when I tried to log in, I found that the forums had been shut down due to popular opinion. I never saw Squid after that. We had never exchanged emails or anything. I'd like to think that Edgardo was still frozen in that moment in time. His fist crashing through the shield and connecting with Zero's big, stupid face. And Edgardo was smiling. He'd won. He and Squid and Golden Harl. They'd won.